Okay, so we have question number eight from um, June 2017, Mechanics M1 paper from IAL. Okay, you have two particles Q, P and Q with masses 2M and M respectively. They attach to the ends of a light and extensible string. The string passes over a small smooth pulley which is fixed at the edge of a rough horizontal table. Particle Q is held at rest on the table and particle P is on the surface of a smooth inclined plane. The top of the plane coincides with the edge of the table. The plane is inclined to the horizontal angle of alpha where the tangent of alpha is three quarters as shown in figure four. The string lies in a vertical plane containing the pulley and a line of greatest slope of the plane. The coefficient of friction between Q and the table is a half. Um, particle Q is released from rest with the string taut and P begins to slide down the plane by writing down an equation for each for, for writing down an equation of motion for each particle, find the initial acceleration and the tension in the string. So the initial, in, the initial acceleration of the particle and the tension in the string. That's what we need to find. Okay, so now, the initial acceleration of the system. I mean. Now, in order to do this, we need to first of all put all the different forces that are acting on this diagram. So that's what I'm going to do first. So let's start with the weight of the particles. Let's start with the weight of the particles. Okay, so you've got the particle P, weight acting straight down, particle Q, weight acting straight down. Then we've got the reaction force when the particle is in contact with the surface. So there's a reaction force acting straight up here. And the reaction force is always perpendicular to the surface. So when you've got something which is at an angle like we have here, the reaction force will always be perpendicular. So this is going to be the reaction force here is going to be perpendicular. Now, we know that the, the, the horizontal table is a rough horizontal table. And as P is going to start moving this way, acceleration is going to be in, in the direction that they mentioned, this direction here. Okay, this is going to be the acceleration. because It says that P is going to go down the slope. So the friction is going to oppose the motion. So the friction is going to act in the opposite direction. So that's going to be the friction. So let's put these the values in here. You've got the, the weight of or well, the mass of uh, particle P is 2m, so the weight is mass times g, so this would be 2mg. And the mass of this is m, so this would be mg. This is the friction force. This is the reaction of Q, okay, and this is the reaction of P. They're not going to be the same. We've got the tension on, in the string, okay. That will be the same in both parts because there's one light in this inextensible string. The tension is the same all the way through. Okay, so then we've got to look at the forces here in the direction of motion. So we've got to um, resolve these forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so the weight here will have a component which is parallel to the plane, and it'll have a component which is perpendicular to the plane, which will be acting down here. Just move that a bit. Okay, something like that. Okay, so the angle here is theta, is alpha, sorry. So the angle will be alpha over here as well. This is angle alpha. Okay, so let's put the forces for this. We know that um, this is 2mg, its component in this direction, you're moving away from the angle, it's going to be sine. So this will be 2mg times the sine of alpha. Whereas this is 2mg times 2mg times the cosine of alpha as we're moving into the angle to give us that component. Okay, so that's 2mg cosine alpha acting this way, 2mg sine alpha acting that way. Okay, that's the reaction acting upwards, perpendicular to the plane. That's the tension in the string acting that way. Um, this is a smooth, uh, smooth surface. It says that the inclined plane is smooth. Therefore, there's no friction acting as well. If it was also rough, there would also be a frictional force here. But there's not. There's a frictional force here. Why? Because we know that the, the horizontal table is, is, a, is, is rough. So there's friction acting there. And we know that the coefficient of friction, they told us, the coefficient of friction is equal to a half. Okay, the other thing that's important here as they told us that tan of alpha equals three quarters. 
and to make life easy for us, I would not advise you to work out what alpha is using this, because you'll get an, an answer that you have to round. Okay, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine for you to do it. But just to make life easier for you in terms of dealing with the numbers, if you think about it, if this is alpha, the tan of alpha is 3 over 4 opposite over adjacent. If this was a right angle triangle, okay, that would be 3 over 4. And the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle where tan of alpha is 3 quarters is going to be 5 by Pythagoras. 3, 4, 5 triangle. So we can work out the exact value for the sine of alpha, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the exact value for the cosine of alpha, which is adjacent over the hypotenuse, which we'll probably have to use in this question. So we've got like exact values instead of getting finding the angle, and the angle won't give us an exact value when we find the sine and cosine of the angle. So it's much better for you to, if they give it to you in this form, it's much better for you to find the exact values by just making a right angle triangle and then working out what sine and cosine of the angle is. Okay, so now we're kind of ready to deal with this question. Okay, so now, if we look at um, the forces acting on um, Q first, let's deal with Q first. Okay, we can deal with either of them. Um, in fact, let's deal with P first. Let's deal with P first because there's less forces acting on it. Right, let's deal with P first. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a snapshot of P so we can see what's going on. Take a snapshot of everything around P. And I'll paste it down here. Below. I'll paste it over here somewhere. Okay. Now, let me go back. Now, this is P. All the forces acting around P. Okay. So, if we consider P. Okay, so consider P. Now, in this case, it's accelerating down the slope. So, I'm going to resolve forces down the slope, parallel to the slope. And I'm also going to resolve forces perpendicular to the slope. Okay, always parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Okay, so if we look at the forces acting down the slope, you've got your 2mg sine alpha, sine alpha. Okay, so you've got 2mg times sine of alpha, and you've got minus your tension in the string, and that's equal to the, the force, the mass times acceleration. Remember, F equals MA. So the mass is 2m, and the acceleration we don't know, A. Okay, now, we, we already worked out from above, sine, sine alpha is 3 fifths, okay? So we know that sine alpha from what we did earlier is equal to 3 fifths. So we can say that this is 2 times m, I'll leave things in terms of g right now, times 3 fifths, okay, times 3 fifths, minus t equals 2 ma. Let me just uh, move this down a bit. So that will give us... 2 times 3, which is 6, so that's 6 mg over 5 minus t equals 2 ma. Okay, that's one of the equations we've got using the forces acting down the plane. Now we've got perpendicular to the plane. Now perpendicular to the plane, it's not moving in that particular direction at all. So it's kind of equilibrium in that, you know, plane, okay, perpendicular to the plane. So you can say that the reaction of P is equal to 2mg cosine alpha, which is equal to 2mg times 4 fifths, which is 8 fifths of mg. We might not even need this, but this is something that we just, it's always good to resolve perpendicular and parallel to the plane. And let's go to particle um, Q. Let's do the same thing. Let's just take a snapshot so we can see what's going on. I'll take a snapshot of What's happening here? Oops, where is it gone? Okay, that's all of the forces acting on particle Q. Let's paste it down here.
Okay. Now, let's consider Q. Consider Q. Now, for Q, we've got basically the forces acting um, horizontally, going into the right, to the right according to this diagram. So we can say that T minus the frictional force is equal to um, MA, which is going to be MA, because the mass is A, M, right? It's just one M. Okay, now we know that it's moving, so the frictional force must have reached its limiting value. So F must equal mu R. Okay, and if we resolve uh, vertically, we can, say, we can see that the reaction force of Q is equal to mg. Okay, so we can say that the frictional force is equal to, and we're told also that mu, remember mu is equal to a half. They told us that in the question. The, the coefficient of friction is a half. So you've got a half times the mg. Okay, so F is equal to a half, m, you can say mg over 2. Right? So now we can say that T minus mg over 2 equals ma. Okay? So let me just move all this stuff a bit lower down. I don't really need this stuff over here. Take him back up there again. Okay? So we've got T minus mg equals ma. And we've also got um, the other equation that we, we worked out from the... Um, first part, which was this equation right here, which I'll copy and paste down. This is the equation from the first part of the work we did. All right, so this is from particle Q, and this is from particle P. Okay, so you can say we've got two equations. Now, to solve these equations, what I can do is I can eliminate T, because they have the same coefficient, by just adding the two equations together. They have the same coefficient, different sign. So if I add these together, the T will disappear. Okay, if on this side I'll get 3 times MA, on this side I'm going to get 6MG over 5. 6MG, or oh, let's do it this way. Yeah, 6MG six, six over 5 minus MG over 2. I just wrote it the other way around, that's all. Okay? Okay, so... That's what I'm going to get here. Now, to add these together or to subtract these, I must make the denominator the same. So they're going to be over 10. That's going to be over 10. That's going to be times 2, so that'll be 12 mg. And that's going to be times 5, that minus 5 mg equals 3 times ma. Well, you're left with 7 mg over 10 equals 3 ma. The M's will cancel out, and you divide both sides by 3. So you can say A is going to be 7 over 30. Okay, 7 over 30 times G. That is your acceleration of the system. Okay, and now we're left to find the value of T, which we can find by just substituting it into one of the equations we got earlier. So we got T equals, um, let's see, this looks a bit easier. Let's use this equation. Okay, let's use this equation. We've got T minus mg over 2 equals ma. So we can say from this that T is equal to ma plus mg over 2, which is equal to, make some more space here, Okay, that's equal to MA. So we got M times A, which was 7 over 30G. Yep. 7 over 30G plus MG over 2. That gives you 7MG over 30 plus M. Well, let's just get it ready. MG over 2 is like 15MG over 30. If you make that 30. Let's multiply that by 15, so it's 15 mg. So you're left with um, 22 mg over 30, which if you simplify it is 11 mg over 15. Okay, so that's what the tension is. Um, 
you could leave the answer like this if you wish to. Okay, sorry, there's no M's now because, uh, yeah, there is an M for the tension. All right, so you can leave this as it is if you wish to. Absolutely no problem. Or you could write it in terms of, um, you know, you can, make, you can multiply by 9.8 and write it in terms of a decimal. But leaving like this is perfectly fine. Okay, leaving like this is perfectly fine. So there we have the answer to question 8, part A. Uh, we found the acceleration and we found the tension in the string. And um, in the next part of the video, I'm going to do, the next video, I'm going to do part B. Okay, so keep your eyes. eyes.